Hello guys, I am back. This is Sushi and this is day 5 of the 100 day challenge of making a comic or web comic in my case. Anyways, let us talk about um I don't even know what to talk about anymore, but okay, let's talk about how I make my web comics. Well, I will show you um, a step-by-step process on how I make my webcomic but I will do it while doing a time-lapse of episode 5 I'm actually gonna post episode 5 on March 7 but because I have I no longer, I no longer have any clips to use <laughs> for the 100 day challenge I'm gonna use what I'm using right now what I'm doing right now I'm sorry, because I'm I'm cre- currently working on episode five, and um, okay, let's start first. I usually start with a script. It's a very rough script. Sc- it's a very rough script with a format of how I make novels, like any stories I make. I use that before. I would do screenwriting screenplays but i got tired with the format it's so it's so restrictive i cannot work on my own pace because i have to constantly follow the format and i don't like that <laughs> anyways after making the script usually i would just go by the flow whatever i think i think about or I base it on the previous episode and work my way through that. But in my case, in today's like in today's episode, this episode five for Anorahi, I have already made this way back after, before, like way back when I was working on episode three, because usually I get so worked up, like my the inspiration is coming in my head so fast and a lot so i have to write them down immediately (laughs) after working on a script i work on the sketch i usually sketch them on a widespread canvas but before i would do them um on pen and paper but I figured that I would be disgracing Mother Earth if I do that. (laughs) So I just work on the sketch process on my laptop with my pen tap. And it also helps um, with me work my way with using pen tap more. Because if I get so used to it with traditional pen and paper art style i wouldn't be as as efficient or you know as fast as i could when working on my laptop and i want to feel comfortable with working with a pen tab than a pencil but i love working traditionally it gives me a lot of freedom but there are a lot of pros to when working with pen tab Anyways, after doing the sketch, I I lay out everything on the very lengthy format of Webtoon, which is 800 by 2000, 2000 pixels. And I lay them out, like lay out everything that I have sketched and see it if it is placed in the right, you know, right position the panels if i place them on the right positions and afterwards i would just start doing the line art or what other people would say inking stage for me i call it line art stage because it is where i would see the clean type or clean clean something i forgot the word for it i think it's just a clean line art for everything and then that's when i would start coloring that that's when i would start coloring the 
base colors. I don't have the base colors yet for episode 5 because I am still working on the line art. Line art is so hard. Especially now that I stopped using pen. I am now using G pen because I feel like G pen has more, you know, depth than pens because pens is just um one size, one size and you cannot do much like you cannot press the pen more and make it bigger or wider than it is because it's just one size with g pen however you can have a variety of sizes when it comes to lines and it it just you know gives a 3d effect as well and it also follows my sketch because usually when I sketch I use pencil as my pen or some I what I write or what I use for drawing. I use pencil because we all use pencil when we draw, right? <laughs> when we sketch. So when I use my pencil or when you use pencil as um default for sketching there there are usually thicker lines than thin lines, so I need G pen to you know to follow the lines that I have already set for line art. Afterwards, I do cell shading. Cell shading is like putting shadows or the first shadows of an object. I don't know how to explain it. I am not an art art student, so I don't know how to explain it, you know, correctly. But when I was watching countless YouTube videos, I would usually see them do that first before they put the overall shadow. Actually, there's a lot of process when doing that, but I only put the basic cell shading, like the sh- shadows under the neck, shadows under the nose shadows under the hair and shadows uh, on the lower part of the eyes something to give a 3d effect to the character or to the object afterwards i would just put um, basic shadows like usually i use the gradient tool but Sometimes I use watercolor. Before I was using gradient tools. Actually, I was using gradient tools before. But I was fascinated with the texture that watercolor gives. That's why even in cell shading, I would use watercolor instead of pen. Because I use pen for cell shading. That's now my, you know, my consistent pen tool my tool consistent tool for using for making cell shading but now i use um, gradient tool for shadows and i use pen before when i was fascinated with watercolor and the texture it gives i would use watercolor non-stop you would see it if you read my webcomic you would see episode 2 to 3, I guess. You would see the watercolor <laughs> texture that I would put in every character, in every panel that I make. Because I was so fascinated over it. I think I'm, I'm going to use it again if I have um, really complicated panels. Like something that gives off, you know, complicated art. I would use watercolor again but for now I would use pen because it's consistent and I it's not hard to work with <laughs> afterwards after shadows cell shading shadows I would work on highlights highlights are easy because I usually just use airbrush tool and add as the I don't know what to call that the mode the mode of the layer i would use add because it gives off a shiny appearance and i put the 
highlights on where the light hits most. Usually, if I want to create the effect of, you know, focus on the eyes, I would just put countless airbrush on um, the eye parts of the characters. But now I'm trying to study how really how the light really affects or how how the light really hits the object. But. Mm. That's for another video, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, after highlights, I would start putting on the... What do you call this? The words, the bubbles. I don't know how you say that. I, I put bubbles as the title on my layer. Because they're little bubbles. I don't know what the consistent format for my thought bubbles. Because I would... You know, sway from circles to rectangles to squares and whatever. But for my dialogue bubbles, I would usually just draw them over. Because I feel like it's more authentic and more, you know, friendly to the viewers if I draw the dialogue bubbles. But I'm seeing other webcomics do it differently and I feel so insecure. <laughs> but, you know... We all do different things. <laughs> Anyways, after that, I do some final touch-ups. I usually have a more complicated way of doing my webcomic. But this is the standard and this is what I follow always. I have made five episodes already. And even in other work, artworks, even in illustrations, I would follow them. I would usually follow this um, standard way of creating something because I don't know it's easier for me I don't know for you guys if you have other suggestions on how to work on your webcomic or if you have any way like if you have other ways on making and you want to share them you can share them below in the comment section and if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share this with your friends if you feel like this is helpful. Because <laughs> I don't feel like it is helpful. <laughs> if you feel that it is helpful, please comment down below. <laughs> and if not, you can recommend or suggest things that I should work on with my videos. I plan on making more commentary videos in the future because they're in there's something that i they are something that i enjoy doing babbling rambling in front of the my recorder <laughs> anyways bye